on TV. Time to convene the October 8th meeting. <laughs> we need to order. Yes. To order. <laughs> we'll order. All right. Um, roll, call. roll call. All right. Art Highland. Here. Andy Rice. Here. Bob Cantrell. Here. Paul Engelman. Here. Carl Gnevuk. Here. Daniel Arevalo. Here. And Allie Baxter is absent. We have a quorum. Baxter, I said Baxter, right? Oh gosh, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of someone else. Okay. I'm thinking of her email address. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So, Allie Mayer, I apologize. First is uh, to approve the minutes of the August 13th meeting. Could I have a motion? Okay. Uh, Roll call. Shut down to anything to that. Should I do a roll call for this? Yes. Roll call. Andy Rice? Here. Oh. Art Highland? Here. Uh, yes. Bob, Cantre <laughs> Bob Cantrell? We're doing this again? <laughs> For the minutes. Oh, okay. yes. Try to keep up. <laughs> Paul Engelman? Aye. Carl Gnevu? Aye. Aye. Daniel Arevalo? Aye. Okay, the minutes are approved. On our unfinished business, we have none. For on our new business for the 2019 14 CC. SIP Properties Incorporated, SU, Special Use, Special use. No Proof, Gina, open, open the public hearing, yeah. public uh, hearing opening at 6 Sol 3. Okay. <laughs> do you, Gina, do you swallow me swear or affirm to tell the truth? I do. Gina Delrose, Community Development Planner. The case was published in the Boone County Journal on September 13th, and certified mailings were sent out on September 11th. The applicant is requesting a special use for a plan development. Within that plan development, there are two special uses being requested, indoor and outdoor commercial entertainment to allow the uses such as bars and beer gardens, a variance to allow outdoor commercial entertainment closer than 300 feet to residential property, in this case it's about 90 feet, and a deviation from permitted building materials. Typically metal is not allowed as a building material. Obviously the containers are made out of metal. So those are the uh, items being requested. The property is currently vacant and there's a there's a metal building on there as well um, to the north is residential to the south is a parking lot to the west is a comed substation residential and a dog park and to the east is residential it is all zone central business except for single family six to the east and the comprehensive plan shows the whole area being a central business with single family to the east the property is currently about five, has a 5,000 square foot metal building and a concrete wall that enclosed a former salvage yard. On April 3rd, 2017, the council approved ordinance 342, granting a special use for a planned development of what was tip commonly called the iron and coal project. That development has not moved forward to various reasons. So the um, applicant is requesting the new plan development. This special use will not nullify the iron and coal special use. Um, so by approving this, we're not taking away the right to do the iron and coal development when the time is appropriate. And many of the special the requests in today's plan development are the same that were the iron and coal development. We're just repeating them. Except for the metal building material, that's the um that's the big difference. Until such time that the property can be fully redeveloped, the applicant is requesting a new plan development for a container park. Container parks are comprised of metal shipping containers that have been retrofitted to house a variety of uses, uses such as retail business, photography studios, farmers markets, musicians, etc. 
Due to their ability to be removed from a site easily, container parks are becoming popular as pop-up activity centers that can be removed and redeveloped when appropriate. In addition to the shipping container, the park will have a large pavilion and outdoor seating for events such as weddings, concerts, markets, etc. The container park will be added will be an added feature to downtown to complement Heritage Days, Hometown Christmas, Buchanan Street strolls, and future festivals. So basically, for those that aren't familiar with pop-up shops, it's there's been quite a few in Rockford. Maybe a photographer that typically does stuff out their house will say, hey, I'm renting this storefront for just three days so I could have more of a studio. Now's the time to get your pictures. Mm -hmm. Or maybe someone that cooks under the cupcake law and typically takes orders, cooks out of their house, knowing that Thanksgiving is going to be a really busy time and they don't want all those strangers at their house doing deliveries, they'll rent space someplace for just the weekend and say, this is where you're going to meet me to pick up your orders. They're, it's temporary shops for those that are either just getting their business started or maybe wanting to touch the waters on expansions. Also for stuff like farmer's markets that are seasonal and you know one day a week, if you can straight strolls like on September 22nd that one got rained out and we had no place to move the vendors the container parks are for stuff like that for last minute we need an indoor space or for someone saying I need a storefront for just a couple of days they're they're pop-up shops um, and with the container parks they're nice for sites that you eventually want redeveloped because it's a container that's bolted to a concrete pad. It still has to meet building code, fire code, all, fire code, all that stuff. But when the time's right for redevelopment, you just unbolt it, pick them up and move it, and you haven't really invested that much into the property. So it's not like, oh, I just built this building and now I have to tear it down for something else. So they're becoming very popular in transitional areas where you want to start seeing retail and commercial growth, but it's not quite there for a level of investment that a brick and mortar building requires. So that's just a little history for container parks and pop-up shops. Does the commission have any questions for staff? Oh, not oh no. So, oh, sorry. so the plan development will allow for the container park that will be utilized as a commercial center which is already permitted an entertainment center and a venue for large gatherings. Such land uses are often found in Belvedere's downtown between the mix of businesses, public festivals, and special events. The layout of the special use will create a perimeter of buildings and concrete walls with the outdoor commercial entertainment area being in a courtyard rather than adjacent to the building. This will help buffer the potential negative impacts that may occur. The subject property is at the edge of the downtown area leading into the warehouse district and a neighborhood of older industrial buildings. The deviation for building material is not out of character for the property as it would be at other locations. The property is adjacent to a municipal parking lot that is often used during downtown events and has access from both South Main Street and Whitney Boulevard. The adjacent parking lot is commonly referred to as the Oktoberfest lot because of its long history of hosting community events. The special use will allow community events and private events to continue in the downtown with the added bonus of having sheltered areas for inclement weather. Planning staff does not anticipate the planned development impeding future development or creating a negative impact on adjacent properties. When and if the time comes that the property is fit for a different development, the container park can be disassembled. All aspects of the planned development will need to adhere to the city codes <coughs> in regards to noise levels, light levels, and property maintenance. Staff recommends approval of case 2019-14 subject to the following four conditions. The plan development shall be developed in su substantial compliance with the site plan dated July 24th, 2019. A full site plan including building plans by a licensed design professional that includes any structural changes, water and sewer service details, stormwater conveyance, detention calculations, driveway access, etc shall be submitted to and approved by the staff, which would include building, public works, police, fire planning, etc. prior to the issuance of building permits. The plan development is gr granting only the following flexible standards. Special uses for indoor commercial entertainment and outdoor commercial entertainment, 
Variances for the decrease in the buffer required between residential and outdoor commercial entertainment from 300 to 90 feet and the use of metal as a primary exterior building material. Does commission have questions for staff? Is there any time limit on how long those containers can sit there? No. So you don't think it'll change the look of downtown with eight or ten containers sitting around down here? It won't I look like a train yard? With the concrete walls there, I don't know how visible they would even be, considering the they're nine foot tall conc concrete. They're going walls. to be inside the concrete walls. Well, that's going to cut down on the interior quite a bit, isn't it? Space on the interior. Mm hmm. Those containers are all about eight feet wide. Yes. What, what's the size of the that, interior? That. Those questions may be better for the applicant when he comes up and testifies. Well, he, kn he knows the exact dimensions of the containers he's planning on using in the layout, so that's why I'm saying the container size may be better answered by him. Okay. <coughs> Any more questions? For you? Could you catch me up on, you talked about a previous special use on, on, on the, uh, uh, the history of the development of the property. Yep. So in 2017, there was a special use applied for that would have housed a uh, brick and mortar restaurant that he was going to call iron and coal to pay homage because that property was the original coal yard for Belvedere and then turned into a iron scrap yard so iron and coal it would have the restaurant would have taken about half the property and the other half would have been a large outdoor patio slash bear garden so the outdoor commercial entertainment, the setback for outdoor commercial entertainment, and the indoor commercial entertainment were all requested at that time for the restaurant large bear garden. And then the metal building that's on that was going to be ultimately used for a banquet facility. Um, he was going to clean it up and use that for banquets as well. That would have most likely been catered from the Iron and Cold restaurant. Um, I don't want to put words in the applicant's mouth, so when he comes up and testifies, um, there is various reasons why that project has not gone through. It's not abandoned. It's just due to slopes, ADA requirements, and some other issues. It's taking longer than he had anticipated. So in the meantime, was looking for a, a, a use to occupy until that one went through. And he can go into details when he testifies. So that special use remains in effect? Correct. And this would essentially is an addendum? Correct. It's basically an addendum because of the metal containers, um, but all the other requests within this one is the same. So, as I understand, the plan to develop the property, this is a temporary or potentially temporary way to get the property in use and um, until such time that it can be further developed. Correct. Is it go? Go ahead. Hold on, Andrew. Just out of curiosity, okay. on the uh, page four, under findings, mm -hmm. it says the project. How is this a positive for downtown? How is this a positive? allowing smaller commercial businesses to be able to have a chance to get started without the investment that many can't afford by we're talking about containers we're talking about containers we're not talking about permanent building oh. on, on a site that i would consider prime real estate for the yep. development of our downtown yep and if you let me finish i'll answer so there are numerous businesses people that run businesses and this is again why pop-up shops are trending there are a lot that want to start businesses that can't afford to start off with a one-year lease if they don't know their business is, is going to succeed so instead they just don't start their business well, this gives them the option to start a business this also gives the option to bring a farmers market back downtown this gives the option for when we have festivals during inclement weather 
to house them at places instead of canceling events downtown? This is not about affordability. This is about investment, okay? Uh, and when we had the uh, iron and coal project in front of us, that was a good positive investment for our downtown. This doesn't come close. This, this is just, I don't, I don't know what it is. Now, you, you talked about the farmer's market. It can still exist down there if people want to come down and do that, but they, they haven't. They've stayed out of Dodge Lanes or wherever, okay? Uh, I, I think, you know, the uh, iron and coal project was very appropriate. And it was well planned out, well thought out, and we approved it. Uh, just as it moved forward, okay? And it's a matter of financing. It's a matter of investment. Uh, I don't think this is going to enhance our downtown. I don't think it's going to encourage people to come into our downtown. It's, you know, we're talking about containers. I, I don't get it. That's, that's not what we're supposed to be about. No one is saying iron and coal is an appropriate development or that iron and coal isn't the more preferred development. No one is, is arguing that. The container parks, they're, they're not permanent developments. They're, they're temporary. That's the nice thing about them. There's no real infrastructure put in. So if when the time comes to redevelop, it's not like, oh, I just did all that stuff and I don't want to redevelop it because I have all this cost. They're, they're designed to be redeveloped. The, the container parks that are popping up in other places, I've not heard of any negative impacts such as bringing on property values and scaring away potential redevelopment. I have not, when I've looked at other container parks, I have not seen that become an issue. Chicago? They're in Chicago, they're more popular up north and on the east coast. They're, they're more common in the larger cities um, where their t space is tight and they're looking for that, Gina, that fill in. Oh, no, not, no. Not right now, Russ. Yeah, no. no. So it could be. After sworn, yeah. So it could be 20 years before it's redeveloped or we have to look at containers now. now. Yeah, with, with that concrete wall right there, I again, I don't. All, on the north side there, there's, you'll be seeing them from the street. I'm sorry, on the west side, the west end. East, east end? West end. Toward the dog park. Okay. All right, Carl. Yes, this potential on my, my thought pattern is, hey, there's some new funky young people that are out there doing this kind of stuff, so maybe that could be attractive. Um, so my big question is public facilities. It, it says that there's water that's going to be. Per code, they'll have to have female bathroom, male bathroom, hand washing, all sanitation and public facilities, yes. And per property maintenance, they can't be rusted. They have to stay painted. The place has to be kept clean, just like any other property with property maintenance. Any other questions? I have a, I have a, I have to if I'm allowed. Yeah, but Go ahead. Eddie, we I, go think on the, I think the chair. The last page, your summary of findings, the second paragraph. The subject property is at the uh, edge of the downtown area leading into the warehouse district in the neighborhood of older industrial buildings. The deviation for building material is not out of character for the property as it would be at other locations. Well, then it's, it's just going to continue to, you know, be a negative in terms of our downtown, in terms of what those containers are going to look like. They're not going to be new containers, they're going to be new used containers, okay? Uh, I don't think this is really appropriate. For what we, the iron and coal, you know, we approved that. That was very appropriate. That was well thought out, well planned. The restaurant, development, entertainment, this again is just a I don't know. I, I don't know just what it is. It, it, Mr. Chairman, if I may, we're kind of evolving into the argument discussion portion of the hearing. At this point, okay. it'd be more appropriate to ask the questions of staff. If they're done with those, the audience make their questions of staff or make sure. their presentation. And then obviously make these kinds of discussions and arguments after you close the public hearing and you've heard all of the evidence. 
All right, can I, I'll proceed with the two questions. So how, for the definition, how, how long will be this temporary? Will be five, 10 years? There's, it's my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the only types of special uses that you can put time limits on are for quarry and extraction uses. Those are, as far as I can recall, without doing the research, as I can recall, those are the only ones where it has been approved by court, or by a court or sustained. Generally speaking, especially use the finding is that it's appropriate for the for the area. The concept of a special use is that, in reality, it's a permitted use, um, but because of the nature of the area, you want to look at it a little more closely than other uses to make sure it does fit. So once it's approved, typically. They have the ability to be there up until there's a zoning district change on the property. Thank you. And one, more, one more last question. So it'll be the same process to get business permit if they're going to be temporary. Is that, how is that going to function if there's people coming in and out? Business license, not a permit. Oh, license. So you okay. just answer. It's like a four question sheet. There's no cost to it or anything like that. And if they're already doing stuff out of their house or whatnot, they should already have that on file. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. This Go is ahead. not an industrial area. There are residences on the north side, the east side, and the city on the on the other, on the west side. There are no industrial factories or anything there. The only thing there is the iron and coal area. So that's it. You're not matching the area. You're just going in where the iron and coal. Any more questions? So the wall that's the, the boundary barrier around the property is it's barriered by three three sides, right? Yes, on the north side there is an existing metal building and then on the east and south side is a concrete wall and on the west side there is also a wall but the elevation change after the easement is pretty significant and so I believe that's why Mr. Cantrell was saying that you would be able to see into it even with that concrete wall there. Are the containers going to be higher than the concrete wall? That's something the applicant can answer. but my understanding is not significantly and when I talked about the industrial we're looking at getting redevelopment going all the way to the leaf building down meadow down locust there are several metal building businesses in that neighborhood That's two blocks away. any further questions Is there any further questions for staff? Does the applicant or any interested parties have for make have questions for staff? <coughs> no. All right, the applicant can, can make his testimony after he's been sworn. Sure. You can come up, Russ, and use one of the microphones. I have to hold the button down while you're yeah, speaking, yeah. though. Oh, okay. Do you, you have to hold it down. Unfortunately. Do you solemnly swear or firm to tell the truth? Yes. Could we have your name for the record, please? Russell Caldwell. Thank you. You may proceed. Gentlemen, at the end of the day, there is no great line of people investing in downtown Belvedere. I have invested two and a half million dollars in these restaurants in this area. Andy, yourself, you know, we do not see huge huge crowds running into our restaurants. Matter of fact, we have cut our hours for lunch because of the participation of the city of Belvedere is lackluster at lunch. This is not an arm turning for you guys. My staff, 
my family, and everybody around me would love you guys to vote this down. And if you want to, that's fine. This application over there is going to cost me another four and a half, four hundred and fifty thousand dollars If you think there's a big line of people investing down here, you're wrong. Now, this is something that if you look at everything we've done down here, and I'm not familiar with everybody here, you may not be familiar with me, that's fine too. Our stuff is second to none. There is no place in Rockford that can equal any of our restaurants or our venue spaces. Okay? This would be no different. If you have no faith in what I'm going to do, you have no ability to see the future of this, you want to be stuck in the past, I'm good with all of it. I will take my half a million dollars and I will go someplace else. This is either we're enthusiastic about it or I'm not interested. I'm not going to go to bed every night wondering, well, if they're going to, yes, no, is somebody going to pick the shit out of this? It's not going to happen. I will take my ball and go home. I want to participate in Belvedere. This is the next thing. Mr. Race, that restaurant for iron and coal, architect's estimate, $5 million. Do you see anybody willing to put a restaurant in Belvedere for $5 million? I will answer that for you. The answer is no. And I do not see anybody in this room writing a check. So I am willing to take a chance on Belvedere and put this in. I have no idea, my discussion with the mayor was, I have no idea how I'm going to monetize this. I don't know if this is going to be a big pit of money that I'm throwing away, or maybe I can break even, or maybe I can even make a little bit of money. have no idea. But I will tell you this, as far as I'm concerned, we either are very enthusiastic about this and we move forward, or we don't move forward at all. And I've, I have indicated that to the aldermen that I've talked to that have asked me about it. And I will tell you gentlemen the same thing. I, will, I, I am not going to argue or fight the issue. Everything that I've done is very nice. And by the way, Mr. Race, Mr. Race, Andy, I bought brand new containers for most of that. So they're not old used ones, except the ones that we are cutting up for the venue space for the kitchen. And by the way, that's already been invested and they've already started to be delivered because I had faith in Belvedere and want to go forward. I have absolutely no problem turning them back to the auction and getting rid of them. So I am really surprised of the questions of what this is going to look like. We've got an old lot with a concrete wall and some old metal siding that's falling down with weeds growing up the middle of it in an area of Belvedere that's been overlooked for years. You have somebody who wants to throw close to a half a million dollars in that crappy lot to make something nice for the city of Belvedere and we're catching, fl and Gina's catching flack? That's absurd. Now, I will put my soapbox away. If you have a legitimate question, I'll be happy to answer it. If you would like to vote it down, again, I, I will leave and I, no skin off my tail. Mr. Caldwell, maybe you can start by describing the types of containers that go in there and how they'd be positioned and, and how they'd be used. The containers will be all inside what would be the city lot. The concrete wall is on three, well, it, if you look at your little picture, the concrete wall against the parking lot will be actually concrete sawed to make two entrances and a lower middle section for people to see in so it's not obscured from the parking lot totally. The containers are eight feet tall, nine feet tall, eight foot from the walking distance. The wall is about 10 feet tall. So I don't know that you're going to see a whole lot unless you're looking through the cut other than the corner that's sticking up as a sign. Now, Mr. Cantrell is correct. When you get back towards the building, that lot has a 60 inch grade variation in it. So if you, percentage-wise, you go back 50% of the lot plus or minus, you're going to see the back end of that container from the dog park. That one, we were, probably, we were probably putting a window in to look at the dog park anyway. You also would see it on the uh, Main Street side. Same thing. That's where the old tin siding is now that they're making a fence out of. 
And so realistically, the side of the container being metal or the metal fence, I'm not sure what the discussion is. Um, so anyway, if you looked at it from the lot, the perimeter of the inside on the main street, what would be, is that north side, the, the steel building side, and the dog park side would be containers. The front side, not necessarily going to have any because that's where you're going to walk in. The pavilion will be in the middle of the section. I'm sure that's the picture they've got, I'm assuming. And if you, if you can zoom in on it, which you can't, but then basically in the middle of the pavilion towards the main street lot, one of the containers opens up for a band shell so that you could be sitting under the pavilion and the band would be in that first container. It's a 12 foot opening in that one. There's a couple of pop-up shops next to that one. There's some on the other side. To Gina's point of young businesses, we have had a, once this got noticed that that was going to possibly happen, I have been contacted by several businesses that want to rent it for weekends. Again, I'm not sure how well that will monetize, but uh, there, there, is, there is interest in that. To what degree, no one knows. And no one knows what this is going to be today. This is one of those things where you have faith for the future and we're not dealing with somebody who has come in here and has no track record in this town. And as far as iron and coal goes, it, it, it possibly could be, but there is also problems with the lot and there's problem with the city supply of water off of Main Street. And there, that lot, because of the great elevations, needs over 70 feet of handicap ramps in it. And by the time you take that restaurant and put 70 feet of handicap ramps in it to make everything work, you are eating up real estate by a large percentage. This is project seven. I have got six projects in downtown Belvedere presently. The Italian restaurant was my number six in the city district of the business downtown. This is number seven. If this goes, there will be a number eight, which will be the steel building remodel. If, if seven doesn't go, eight's not going because it, it just is the next progression of that area. Any other questions? Be happy to answer them for you. Commission have questions for applicant? Go ahead. So uh, part of this includes uh, development of the site itself um, for water and, and uh, electric and so on. What, what's all involved with that? The water and electric is actually in the lot and has been since 1938. Um, the problem is nobody's seen it since 1938. So Brent is, if you go along there and look at the sidewalk, it's painted up. The city's literally got to dig it up to find it because they, they're not exactly sure where it is. It doesn't match the maps and they've put the um, cameras down the pipes and it is not conclusive. So once that is done, um, they will run the, the water and sewer in by the silver building, which is where it was because there was a house on that lot way before my time. And that's where the water is. Uh, electric's already there. Any further questions for the applicant? So you anticipate this to be primarily, that there's not gonna be any permanent businesses in there uh, to your knowledge. It'll be all pop-up or ev event-based, right? Hard to say. I mean, as of this point, and there are a lot of these around, um, the there's one on Randolph in Chicago, the city lot. I've looked at one in Baltimore. I've looked at one in Atlanta. I've looked at one in Nashville. By the way, the one in Nashville is really lousy looking. That wouldn't be my first choice to go look at one. Um, so, I mean, these are, these are popping up around. And if you look at the container use, I mean, there is, there is a lot of them that are happening that you see or don't see. Um, I don't know if there's going to be a permanent well, we know we're going to be permanent there, which is the concessions and things for the venue space. Would there be a permanent renter like an insurance agent or something in one of those? That I doubt. So what is the population that's attracted to these container lots? What does that look like? Well, it depends what the venue is. I will tell you if Lawrence Welk was there, you know, these people right here would be happy to go, you know, listen. You know, I, I, again, it, would, it totally has to do with what the venue is. Um, so, 
again, if it is if a country star, you're going to have those type of people, you know. Um, I'm not sure if there is one, because I mean, we're gearing this more towards the festival and venue spaces of Belvedere, more than the millennials kind of thing. Any other questions for the applicant? So, uh, if you wanted to do liquor sales there, you already have that. Okay. To clarify, with uh, Short Line and Firebox, Russ has a, a city catering license that allows alcohol, so he would be using his restaurant's catering license to service that property. During the festival event, you know, and the, the events. At this particular time, I see no logical reason that that would be a, a ongoing, like a, a nine to five kind of business place. Any other questions? Why, Go ahead. Why have you to hit with the iron and coal Several reasons. Five million dollar investment. The city doesn't have enough water, and the city of Belvedere doesn't come out in any mass to support it. Mr. Rice, Rice, that is correct. And since then, I have opened three restaurants in town. And I will tell you, the city does not come out in mass to support a five million dollar investment. Well, maybe Russ, do you want to? Mr. Rice, I am perfectly happy if you don't want to support this. You're missing the you're missing my point here. Iron and coal right now, with the way the city is and the number of people who come out to eat on a regular basis in town, cannot support that kind of investment. In my opinion. I, 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 that, that's a personal opinion, and you get to vote that personal that's opinion. Where, that's where we're at, and, uh, you know, uh, you, you read the, uh, what the planner had to say. Uh, we just don't believe containers are a positive to our downtown. <coughs> that's, that's the way we, we know what we have downtown now. You know, we have the historical museum. We have City Hall. If you look across the parking lot to the other side, we have a mall with the Salvation Army uh, in a large open area, okay? So that's that's what we have. There's you know nothing detrimental there that's going to uh, change the public's outlook on what our downtown looks like. But I think if you put in containers in, in terms of what you're talking about, I think I think they're negative. I don't think they're positive. Okay, that's just one one person's uh, vision or point of view. But uh, again, it would just perpetuate the appearance of what we have down there now, and that's not what we want to do. We want to have something more positive. And what you proposed with the iron and coal that was definitely a positive. And that's that's perfectly fine. Again, as I pointed out when I started this, this is a everybody's enthusiastic. I mean. I, I have a tough time generating enthusiasm on my sake because nobody wants more jobs and I keep giving them more jobs. So if we don't want, if, you, if, the, if the board decides that this is not something that the city wants, I, am, I, I will be very happy to not do it. You had a question, Paul? Yeah, I'll wait for Okay, go, go ahead, Carl. Um, I, I don't know. Effort. I don't know if this is so much uh, a question as, as uh, simply a statement. Regardless of whatever we decide here, uh, we want you to know that we are very, very happy with what you have done here in Belvedere, both you and your family, uh, to invest in this community. 
and what you've done uh, so far has been outstanding. So thank you for that. Appreciate, appreciate that. I have a question for you, Russ. My suggestion, uh, will you allow somebody, there's a lot of artist people around here, will you let them paint something along with on your back of your containers? So it's against the view of, uh, against the dog park or? Well, the that park. the problem with that is that, that you have to get that approved by city council and get that approved by the art council. You cannot just have a mural painted in Belvedere. All right. Any other questions for the applicant? Did Jack have one? Uh, does anybody have an audience? I mean, Jack, do you want to make a statement or I have a question to give you that? Yeah. Go, ahead. Go ahead, Jack. Jack, you stay there. I'll come to you. Okay. Stay there, Jack. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anything else? No, it's all on. Good evening. I, I'm pleased to. I'm speaking in favor of this project, and I'll tell you why. My wife and I are both born in Belvedere, Illinois. And when we were youngsters, on a Saturday night, my mother used to drive down here and find a parking place so we could watch people walk up and down the street and maybe have a soda. Uh, when I was 11 years old, I used to ride a horse on Buchanan Street. There was a horseshoe shop there. And we had our horses shot in that, in that where the firebox is now. Probably 25 years ago, I wanted to build where the Metropolitan, or whatever the name of the bank is. I haven't got that straight yet, but anyway, I wanted to build a shopping center there. It was beautiful, it was all designed and everything, and the city council turned it down. Uh, I was president and chairman of the YMCA when it was, when it was built in the 60s. I was chairman, I was on the building committee of the museum here. Just put up a new uh, statue. I don't know if you saw. And many people on the council probably thought I was nuts. But our goal is to make downtown better. And there isn't a hell of a lot anybody I've ever seen in my lifetime. And I'm older than I would like to admit. But I've never seen any man, man come to this town like this man is and try to do what he's doing. And I'm ashamed, I'm ashamed of what I, what I see here because anything this man has done has been first class. Go down across from the YMCA, go on his, uh, to any of his restaurants or anything he's touched. And Belvedere hasn't got anybody that's interested in building, building Belvedere. And I am. And always have been. And I, I would have to feel that he's spending serious money. And I would tell you when he gets done with the project, it'll be first class. You don't have to worry about a house next to her it or anything else. I don't like to use bad language in front of the ladies, but what's been there all my life is a brick wall and a pile of shit. All my life. That's all it is. Never been anything else. Now you got somebody that wants to clean it up and make something of it. Now I, I would sure as hell question that. If I, were I don't, I don't know why he does, but I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, 
I would like to see downtown Belvedere grow. And the only thing, way downtown Belvedere is going to grow is if you get new people down there and people start building it. That's the only way. And I guess <laughs> you bawled me out when I got I've said too much already, but I, I've never seen anybody that's come to, come to Belvedere in my lifetime that wants to go downtown, come downtown and build something. So please, don't turn it down. Well. So that was questions. Uh, you know, you know, I don't think it's like that. I don't think it's like that. I don't think it's like that. I don't think it's like Discussion for on the on the commission. Well, I appreciate your comments and your comments, sir. I would just say to uh, uh, those concerned about the project that the choice is not the iron. What was it called? The iron, coal. iron. iron and coal uh, restaurant. And, and this, the choice is this or nothing. And I would s submit to you that as a start point, having this available to us and to have somebody who's going to invest in a first class manner the way he has in this community is a good start. And uh, as a military guy who has lived in worked in and shopped in containers, I can tell you it can be done well. So I, I, I don't think that what your vision, what you think it's going to look like is going to detract from the downtown. And I will say also that I do recognize the fact that this is kind of a trend within, I've, I've seen it used commercially in various cities and, and I think it can be done very well. And by if you are sticking to the site plan, I think it will look good. <clears throat> Any further discussion between the commission? No, I believe in transitional steps. That sometimes you got to take one step forward in order to uh, to get to your destination. Sometimes it's not the step that you're you're always going to end up at. It's just the next thing that you need. Uh, my experience building churches, um, we've put in parking lots that we've later ripped up because that was the next step. That was the next thing we needed to do in order to get to our ultimate goal. And so it may seem like perhaps wasted effort, but I, I, I think we've got a visionary here in our town who's going, this is the next step, and who's willing to put up $500,000 of his own money to make it, make it happen. He's not asking us for the money. Uh, I see no downside to this at all. So that's my thoughts. Any further questions? <laughs> Can I entertain a motion to approve, approve the findings of fact? So moved. Do we need a second? Yeah. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Paul Engelman? Aye. 
Bob Cantrell. Aye. Andy Race. Aye. Art Highland. Yes, aye. Carl Ganevu. Aye. And Daniel Arevalo. Aye. Okay, the findings of fact are uh, approved as presented in the staff report. Now we need a motion to approve the case. Subject to, Subject to the following three conditions uh, mentioned by staff. You said four. So moved. Okay. So moved as stated. Okay. okay. So moved. Was Carl? No, it was um, Paul. Paul. I'm sorry. And I'll second it. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Then we need a roll call. Yeah. Roll call. Paul Engelman. Aye. Art Highland. Yes. Bob Cantrell. Andy Race? No. Carl Ganevu? Yes. Daniel Arevalo? Aye. The ayes have it. The case is approved subject to the three conditions as presented in the staff report. Again, of course, this is not final approval. It has to go to city council, which will occur. Right here. Goes to City Council for first reading, which is the silent reading, October 21st, and then final vote November 4th. You just did. <laughs> of course, you, it's up to the chair. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Speak. <laughs> yeah, speak. Uh, I agree that all the stuff for us has done so far has been top shelf and all that's good. And I hope that this comes out in the second. I don't think I'm sorry. He doesn't need it. He doesn't need it. I've been at all in this restaurant. What was going on Sunday evening over there on Short Line? Canon Street Strolls. Oh, yeah, all the tents and stuff. You have been for that? You have been for that? Every Sunday night? So now that we're on a staff report discussion, Buchanan Street Strolls, the last one is October 20th. There, we've had four this year on Sundays. They're from one to six. We have craft vendors, food trucks. You buy a special cup for a dollar and you can drink outside the bars on the festival grounds. And everyone has been very well behaved. It's been family friendly. We have a YMCA and the library and other groups come with kids activities. And, but on uh, September 22nd, it was raining, so we had to cancel the whole thing, which kind of stinks when you've already had to pay for the bands regardless and stuff like that. There was no venue to move it indoors. Like, this would have gave an option. Um, but, yeah, so on Sundays, one to six was Strolls. We had four this year. The next one and last one is <laughs> October 20th. I've seen Paul and Carl there. It's a fun Sunday afternoon. Um, there's that. Hometown Christmas is coming up in a couple months. Census is still hiring. If you know anyone looking for jobs, they are paying eighteen fifty an hour. Choose your own hours. Can't really beat that. So if someone's looking for some part time work. Sure, census. Being census takers, being address. Um, before they mail out the census forms, they pay people to walk up and down streets to verify that there's actually a house there at that address. Pay me eighteen fifty an hour. I'll walk up and down a street just to verify <laughs> that there's a building there. I mean, it's it's not a bad, not a bad gig. And then no cases next month. Oh, Gina, I'd like to commend you for your work with uh, all the development and uh, activities downtown. Thank you. It's uh, uh, if you haven't been to Stroll on Buchanan, I, mean, I would recommend you go. I was amazed at the number of people who show up to that. Yeah. yeah. I drove by, I noticed there were yeah. a lot of people. It's a really nice event. Yeah, we, the first two, we had about 1,000 people each one. This one, the shard got bigger after it was obvious the Bears were going to lose. <laughs> um, but it's great because there's been quite a few people. As I'm, you know, walking around, we have a bakery down here. We have sushi down here. I mean, there's still yeah, people no in town. Works. Um, we've had several Rockford businesses wanting to set up, and I've said, thank you, but no, thank you. Like, the whole point of this is so people stop going to Rockford. Um, but, oh, yeah, every everyone I've heard someone say, there's a bakery, there's this, there's that. So, 
you know, if they get some coming back and they learn that downtown's a place to go to hang out. And are they advertising the sushi bar? They are, but nowadays no one reads the paper really anymore. You know, your TV it's always Amazon or Hulu or whatever. There's no commercials. It's really hard for businesses to advertise because people don't listen to radio. They have Sirius, so there's no commercial breaks. You know, they're on their phone, so there's no ads. There's no, no, paper. There's no paper. So it's very, very hard to advertise. So stuff like strolls and Heritage Days and Hometown yeah, Christmas is how. Yeah, it really is because um, you get that whether you want it or not. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they're advertising, but people, you know, it's hard to reach them. So the best way is to do something fun and trendy and, and different to get them out here because they're curious. And Facebook, you know, people ta take a picture, tag themselves on Facebook. That's really the best way to get it done. I know what Mr. Caldwell has done is pretty smart in my opinion. I remember Bacchus Nibbles? Yeah. I swear that restaurant failed because they never advertised, yeah. you know, especially up towards North Carolina County. Um, what he's been doing is uh, giving some money to local sports organizations like the YMCA swim teams, I think it from BYB, and some other places. And then he gives them a bunch of little uh, coupons for free ice cream. So, you know, they go up there and you have the baseball game, people giving out these free tickets, so they go down to Sips and Sprinkles. Yeah. They've got this free ice cream. They're not cheap at the restaurants. They're not cheap, it's, but they're good. Expensive. But they're good. It's, you know, for the quality, it's yeah. you know, every bit as good as what you find in Elgin or Hinsdale or downtown right, that's right. and less. The ice cream is fantastic, and they'll do shakes. Yeah. You can go to their hard, hard pack ice cream, you can mix and match flavors, and make a shake out of it. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. I, I, I go there a lot. I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Anything else, Gina? Motion. Second.